the studios of Sondland University, this is Robcast, the light-hearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello and welcome to another Ropecast, our podcast about English and everything connected with it. Hello, Peter. Hello, Roger. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, Roger, I think we need to get back to that problem of uh, austerity. It's a difficult word um, because I can't really get that off my mind. No. And uh, it's the kind of thing that I think students also need to know how to talk about because that will stay with us for oh, quite a while. I'm sure it will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We discussed a couple of ways in which universities can save money. but uh, like, what, like cutting down faculty, yes. which means staff. Staff would be the British <laughs> yeah. word, yes. Uh, right, yeah. Um, in, in theory, you could also cut out whole faculties, like yeah. the Faculty of Medicine. Right, which is a department uh, also, and depending on where you live. Right. <laughs> But what about if universities decide that they can increase class sizes? Hmm. Yeah, they're thinking about that. Well, for language teaching, of course, this is not a good idea because imagine a language class with uh, 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 about 50 students. I mean, how much actual timed talk would you have as an yeah. individual student? Um, there's another problem. You'd have to create huge lecture halls for some cases, which yeah. they've already done, and they've reached a point at which even with uh, with microphones and speakers, you can't really, really get through to everybody. So there's a limit here. Yes. Well, leaving aside lectures, um, there is research that shows that the larger the class, yes. the less active participation there is by students. Which is what I was yeah. saying. I yeah. mean, it's mathematical. Um, that is, fewer students say anything at all, uh -huh. and those that do decide to say something usually are asking for clarification or dealing with pretty basic matters, so they're not really engaging with the topic. They're not really contributing uh, in an active or creative way to... It's been shown that uh, students in large classes tend to concentrate on what they regard as facts. Mm -hmm. which um, perhaps they can memorize for a, an upcoming test or examination. Whereas and in, and we've uh, come full circle here, which is not a thing that a language class will be about because, unfortunately, very often, um, good language is not a fact that you can mm -hmm. say, okay, like one and one is two. Uh, every language teacher will tell you that. You know that. <laughs> you, you, you ask a question and, and you'll always say, huh, depends. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's also been found that in larger classes, the um, students involved tend to deal with rather superficial levels of the topic rather than actually trying to understand and to make connections. Which, of course, in turn would um, reduce the quality of instruction Indeed, or learning. Yeah. And probably will reduce the quality of the outcome. That means... Do you get a first-class de degree, second-class degree? Uh -huh. If you're in Britain, these are the, right, the right. types of degree, or third-class. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing, of course, is um, it's harder to provide feedback in a large class. Uh, definitely. I mean, if nobody is saying anything, how are you <laughs> going <laughs> to give feedback? I mean, you have to have a feed forward first. <laughs> that does not exist, folks, this word. But you know what I mean. <laughs> People have to talk to get feedback. And uh, the, one more point is that um, the kind of contact between the instructor and the students mm -hmm. is different in large classes. How's that? It's less personal contact. Uh huh. So instructors are tending to deal with whole groups of students rather than individuals. Mm -hmm. And that too affects outcomes. That is interesting because, you know, German universities and maybe even European universities as a whole uh, have been trying to sort of Americanize themselves uh, by, you know, introducing uh, um, different study programs that are more practically oriented and uh, also by, of course, introducing um, 
exams at the end of every individual course that people are taking, yes. introducing the bachelor exam as a first exam and all that. But part of the American University is actually this very personal contact between the instructor and the student. Yes. That is a very different thing. They meet out of outside of class. There are extracurricular activities that everybody engages in. And I think a little bit of that is in, or maybe a lot of that is in Great Britain as well, isn't that? Oh, yes. Maybe we should save that for the next podcast. Yeah, definitely. Personal contact between instructors and their students. Folks, sometimes we regret that we can't have a really personal contact with you, our listeners. But there's our website, www.ropecast.de, where you can send us comments. And if you want to join us in the studio, maybe we can even make that possible. Just send us an email. Bye for now. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.